Welcome to Myths Reborn, a channel where we explore all aspects of mythology from godly quick takes to deep dives into specific archetypes. On today's episode of Understanding Labyrinths, we're going to explore in a little more detail the differences between mazes and labyrinths, how these words are used and what they mean in a mythological and spiritual way. In our first part, we briefly went over these definitions of mazes and labyrinths, more specifically where the words originated from. We also covered a little bit of the story of Theseus and the Minotaur and some aspects of the labyrinth and mazes relating to pop culture. While for the most part terms like mazes and labyrinths are used interchangeably, they do have some distinct characteristics. Let's take a look. In the first video, we pointed out the main distinguishing feature between a maze, which is usually shown as an intricate puzzle, and a labyrinth, which is a single path. In Penelope Reed Dube's book, the idea of the labyrinth from classical antiquity through the Middle Ages, she offers two simple terms to solidify this difference, unicursal or multicursal path. A unicursal labyrinth is one that makes all use of the available space. It is complex, intricate, and aesthetically pleasing to see from above. If you were the labyrinth walker, then just head forward, walk along the path, and eventually you'll either reach the center or the exit, depending on the style. A multicursal maze, on the other hand, is one that offers multiple possibilities. If you are looking from above, then at every single crossroads, you have to pause and make a decision. This is the more confusing and longer to solve of the two. If you are the maze walker, then you can be stuck inside hitting dead ends, doubling back, and trying again. It all has to do with the path and how it is walked. By this, I mean the intention and tension and the purpose behind each of these structures. The destination of the labyrinth, or unicursal path, is clear. Like destiny, your fate is sealed. You won't hit a dead end inside, no need to double back, and it's a not so straight line to the end. This is why labyrinths are mostly used throughout the Middle Ages and in many meditation and spiritual help groups. It stands as a symbolic pilgrimage. The purpose of the labyrinth is not to solve an external conflict, but an internal one reflection, meditation, and facing your personal demons or minotaur as you reach the inevitable center. With a maze, however, you have the what if element. We can go that way, but what if we went the other way instead? The difference here is choice. In video games, movies, and kids puzzle books, mazes are excellent at giving the walker much more agency. The mistakes made inside are your choices. You might hit a dead end, you have before making a choice, like we said before. Of course, many know that the way to solve a maze is to stick to the left and eventually you'll reach the exit. This strategy works because usually mazes are presented to us within a confined space. In this space, there are only two openings, with an entrance and an exit. Mazes have taken many artistic forms, such as hedge mazes, corn mazes, and the vastly complicated puzzles with challenges within. Now that we know the difference between them, what did the ancient Greek hero Theseus enter? A maze or a labyrinth? In Crete, by the order of King Minos, Theseus was thrown into the dreaded labyrinth constructed by the architect Daedalus. So that's it, right? It's called the Cretan Labyrinth, therefore Theseus and the gang entered in a single path labyrinth. The myth, however, complicates this by telling us that the princess Ariadne gave Theseus a ball of twine to unravel at the labyrinth's, travel at the labyrinth's entrance so that our hero can finally find his way back. But wait, hold up. If it was in fact a labyrinth, then wouldn't it have been a single path? Why then would he have needed a ball of twine to find his way through? Many scholars believe that the ball of twine signifies a kind of umbilical cord. As Theseus enters a boy and defeats Minotaur, he emerges as a fully fledged hero that will eventually become king of Athens. The labyrinth itself is the womb, and so technically the Minotaur is puberty, I guess? Now, what if the name is Cretan Labyrinth, while the actual structure was a maze, as supported by several texts that say that Daedalus himself, upon completing the maze, was almost lost within it? In this case, the ball of twine makes much more sense. It is a literal method of escape that Theseus has. The labyrinth sees the Minotaur confrontation as an inevitability. It is not so much will we see the Minotaur, 
but when. The maze, on the other hand, is much more appealing to us because it gives Theseus a more active role. It is a puzzle to use to his advantage and hopefully out with the Minotaur and emerge victorious from his own talents. Let me know down in the comments which of the two do you think Theseus went into, a maze or a labyrinth? Other authors have added their own definitions of what labyrinth and mazes mean. Many agree that both terms refer to man-made structures Others disagree and refer to confusing or intricate passageways. However, with that latter definition, would caves and caverns then qualify as labyrinths and mazes? If the term refers only to man-made structures, then did labyrinths originate with the complex buildings of Mesopotamia and Egypt? Umberto Eco, the author of The Name of the Rose, defines labyrinths in three distinct ways. For Echo, the kind of labyrinth is the Greek, the labyrinth of Theseus. This kind does not allow anyone to get lost. You go in, arrive at the center, and then from the center, you reach the exit. The classical labyrinth is the Ariadne's thread of itself. In this definition, the confrontation with the Minotaur is inevitable. The terror arises with not knowing when the confrontation will take place. There's no avoiding it. If the Minotaur is not defeated, then the exit will never be acquired. When this labyrinth is unraveled, it reveals a straight line, a single path. The second of Echo's labyrinths is called the Mannerist Maze. This is our traditional puzzle maze. As Echo states, if you unravel it, you find in your hands a kind of tree a structure with roots, with many blind alleys. This is the challenging maze, the one that has one exit, but you can get it wrong, you can be misled or try again. It is a model for the trial and error process. His third and final, his third and final definition of labyrinth is arguably the most complex of all labyrinth and mazes definitions, which he calls the net, or rather what French philosophers Deleuze and Guattari call the rhizome. The rhizome is so constructed that every path can be connected with every other one. It has no center, no periphery, no exit, because it is potentially infinite. It is important to note that both the Italian author Umberto Eco and the Argentinian author Jorge Luis Borges, whose short stories are mostly based on mazes and labyrinths, and whose stories Eco used as inspiration and critique for his own novel, were both postmodern writers. Postmodernism is a difficult to define term from the later half of the 20th century that focused on reacting to the previous movement, modernism. It became a reactionary movement to theories, ideologies, and notions of what art is. Essentially, for the postmodern, speaking in broad terms, reality is based on the individual. Reality changes and shifts between people's perception of it. For Echo, his novel, the previously mentioned The Name of the Rose, features a mannerist maze within a rhizomic world. The library was a maze of many corridors hiding books and treasures within, but this medieval world he constructed is part of a giant rhizome. No beginning, no end, just that moment in time that speaks of a huge array of mathematical, philosophical, historical, and scientific ideas and ideologies which are all interconnected one way or another, a labyrinth of words. Don't worry, we'll have an entire video talking about the labyrinth of that novel. So, what's the differences between mazes and labyrinths? Technically, apart from the paths mentioned and the meaning behind that, with a possible rhizomic time-bending interconnected third super labyrinth maze that transcends time and space ends time and space in the background, there really is no difference in that general sense. In the end, while they may derive from different origins, the terms are and will be interchangeable unless the speaker or writer specifies the definition. However, there are some cases where the distinction must be recognized. It is inappropriate to speak of a Hampton Court labyrinth and the Cretan maze. In that case, the term is part of the name and their definition integral with what is happening there. If you see the specific term labyrinth being used, then it may have a more spiritual component, similar or referring to meditation, with many Eastern and medieval influences of either mandalas or pilgrimages respectively. We must walk the labyrinth refers to meditation. When the specific term maze is used, such as corn maze and hedge maze, or in movies like The Maze Runner, then you will know beforehand that there will be a puzzle element and will play a 
a key factor into solving this maze. Thanks for sticking around. Let me know down in the comments which is your favorite maze or labyrinth and stick around for more videos on godly quick takes, mazes and labyrinths and understanding dragons. Follow me on social media. Check out my Patreon if you want, and if you enjoyed this content, leave a like and ring that little bell icon for the next upcoming video on Myths.